Uh, hello, <coughs> my name is Tobias Reichlin. I'm an electrophysiologist in Bern, Switzerland, working at the Inselspital. Yeah, so in, in our team, kind of, there's uh, eight operators, and altogether we perform about uh, 1600 ablations a year. And so a typical working day is that there's two labs that focus on ablation and one lab that focuses on devices. And in the ablation labs, it's four to five ablations a day. So firepulse we use mainly for patients with um, atrial fibrillation and uh, atypical atrial flutters. And that's the largest group of ablations of the 1600. It's about 1000 is for atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. And there for all left side ablations, it's now our clear workhorse. And we use it in probably almost 90% of the cases. If it's a, an index procedure where we mainly do just pulmonary vein isolation, I think the procedure times are now consistently less than an hour. And that's a very good thing for us because it doesn't matter so much on the operator, it doesn't matter so much on the patient, but just for a PVI, it's now less than an hour. Yeah, so this has greatly affected our lab efficiency because kind of we were coming from times where a point by point um, PVI was taking two and a half hours and the cryo PVI was taking one and a half hours and then bringing down procedure time consistently to less than an hour um, has uh, clearly increased the throughput of our lab. I think it's um, even though the learning curve is short, it's still a procedure that needs dedication. And uh, there's always a risk to get in that need for speed and try to be as quick as possible. And I think it's not procedure time, it's not all. You have to do it carefully, you have to do it meticulously, but then it's a very safe and reproducibly good procedure. So um, we did not start this from day one, but at some point in time, others have asked me, why don't you do your transeptal puncture straight with the fire drive sheet? And uh, so we started to try this and I, I very much like the sheet because first the dilator has a very soft tapering in the beginning. It's a long dilator and then the lip to the uh, sheet is very soft as well. So it's good for groin axis and it's good for transeptal axis. And so we use the wire, the stiff wire that we will use later for PFA first for groin axis and introducing the, um, the far drive sheet. Then we will use a long BRK needle to the pull down to the transeptal puncture. And then we will feed the wire in a second time, uh, move the wire into a pulmonary vein and then transfer the sheet over into the left atrium. And then we will use the same wire the third time for the far drive sheet. And so kind of it's a, it's a streamlined procedure that is in our hands working very well. Um, a bit hard to know when then we would need quality of life data kind of to support this um, and so my uh, total personal experience with this is I think the shorter the procedure time the shorter the anesthesia for the patient and the quicker the recovery of the patient that's one and second kind of while patients after thermal ablation often exhibit signs of pericarditis and so, some mild uh, chest discomfort um, after pulse field ablation that almost never um, occurs and the patients are have a very speedy recovery after the ablation So after the initial data from Prague, where um, all patients at uh, three months after ablation were brought back to the lab, irrespective of recurrence or not, um, there was a very high durability of 95% uh, was found. And so the hope was now, finally we found the tool that makes durable lesions. And now unfortunately it turns out that in the patients that are coming back to the lab for clinical recurrence, so that's a different group of patients, here the durability is not all that high, it's about 
the 75% um, of the veins are isolated and about 50% of the patient exhibit kind of four isolated veins. So there still remains some room for improvements. Those data is kind of quite similar with the uh, thermal ablation data. I think from a real-world standpoint now with Manifest um, 17K, uh, it was 106 centers involved. So that's real, real world because sometimes it's a bit of the issue if a technology is just in some high volume centers, how reproducible, how scalable is that for the rest of the world? And now with 106 centers, I think that's really reproducible and representative for the rest of the world. And it has clearly shown, in my opinion, that it's a very safe procedure with uh, very, very low numbers of energy related complications, importantly no fistula and no phrenic nerve um, palsy and with very low numbers of procedure related complications in particular tamponade and stroke. So I think a key scientific learning is that um, we have cryo and RF energy that have a large evolution behind them and operators have done years of training with those technologies. And then we have a new technology, generation one, and the operators um, just kind of did the first few cases. And then when those two technologies were compared, kind of, uh, there was no difference between the two. And you would expect that something that has um, evolved over years would be better. And then interestingly, the new kid on the block Procedure time is significantly shorter and it's very safe. And so I think that's a clear marker for me that that's leading the way to the future. And going forward, we will select more and more the technology that is safe, is quicker and leads to the, at least the same outcomes. So I think I see mainly or three probably, three potential advantages. First, kind of having a mapping uh, technology enables us to create the anatomy and then display the catheter within that anatomy. And I think that can help us to even better position the device to the veins and probably that has a chance to result in even more durable lesions. Second, we can mark where we um, did do ablation and can stack more ablations in some spots if we see that there has not been sufficient ablation. That would be for the index procedure and has the chance to further improve the durability and the outcomes. It will, however, will come at an increase in procedure uh, duration. And then second, for all patients after first ablation um, that continue to have atrial arrhythmias, first we need to map. We need to see is there vein reconnections? Is there no vein reconnections? Is there scars somewhere outside the pulmonary veins kind of to define the lesion set that most likely will help that patient? And for that also, we need a mapping system. And then if we have kind of the ablation catheter, the far wave integrated in there, then we can streamline those procedures as well.